For the past two Sundays, we are talking about how to see in the Spirit, and that God wants us in this season, especially more and more and more, to be able to see in the Spirit, because out there, my brother, my sister, more and more things are going to be disturbing. Heaven and earth will be shaken, and sometimes some people, they would want to, things, they would want to pray that the shaking will stop, and earth shaking will stop, but there's a shaking where God's hand is on the shaking. Make sure you don't waste your time with certain prayer, but also to say, when the shaking is happening out there, to say, God, shake the flesh in my life, please. Shake all the rubbish, all the compromise, all the pathetic reasoning. Shake it out of me, please, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God help you to understand where must you address a storm in the name of Jesus, where the storm must be calm, as you need to go in God's manner to the other side, like when Jesus was walking on the water. Where's the storm that you must come, and where's the storm that you must say, God, may the storm testify about the foundation of my house. Amen. Where God sometimes will send the storm, and the heavens and earth will be shaken, so that the people, the nations will see. A house built on the rock, built on the revelation of who Christ is, those houses, they will stand. That house will stand. And then you as a house... If you've built your house on the rock, on the revelation of who God is, your house will stand. But also we need to pray. We don't like to pray that, but to pray and say, God, shake my house so that I can see where I did not build accurately. Before I built further, and there's more damage, there's more destruction, because I built inaccurate. And I'm building on foundations that are cracked, foundations that are not strong, have mercy on me, Lord, by showing me where's cracks in the foundation. Have mercy on me by showing me, and even if you must use some people around me, my husband or my wife or, or the leader or the boss or somebody or a student or a fellow brother and sister or circumstance, God, have mercy on me in the process, but show me. Because the further you build, the bigger the destruction can be. We don't want to waste our time on earth. Amen. Are you with me? Now, if we say we need to see in the spirit, what am I saying, my brother, my sister? There's a facet. If I can see what God sees, then I can have a destiny. Because then my heart is with him. But if my heart is not with him, I cannot see. To see what God is saying, your heart needs to be connected with his heart. It's not just a word, but your heart needs to be connected with his heart. Now we're reading from Genesis, and we preached about this 27 times, but here we go again. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, and empty darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, but before the beginning, before the beginning, God was the beginning and is the beginning. And forever, before that time, before time, he was the beginning. But he saw something before he created the heavens and the earth. And in that dream, what he saw, he painted a backdrop. And the backdrop is verse 1. He created the backdrop for what is coming. And the backdrop is he created the heavens and the earth. But further, no form, empty, nothing, but the spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. Now he says, formless, empty. Many circumstances, many situations in your life, you could feel there's no form, there's no substance, substance, an emptiness, that you could feel maybe an emptiness, darkness, darkness. Now, once again, my brother, there's a darkness that you must flee from. There's a darkness that is filled with hell and demons. And there's a darkness that is from God. What was in this darkness? The Holy Spirit, 
that was hovering. There is a darkness that's from God. And that is a place where you don't know what's happening. That's a place where you don't see. But that's a place where God is pleased for his sons and his daughters to walk by faith. And where faith is the sight. And God will purposefully, many times, leave you in that place so that he can create. Tomorrow, the first day, the second day, the third day. And God is just moving from the one season to the next season, to the next day, to the next day in your life. And he's creating, and he's creating, and he's working, and he's working. Are you with me? God wants to move. But you don't go and fight the place of darkness where God is. Darkness where the spirit is hovering. And darkness where hell has an agenda. For that, you need to see what he sees. So if I can see why God created the backdrop, the heavens and the earth, and my brother and my sister is the backdrop, the universe, who declares the glory and the splendor of God, the universe. And that's only the backdrop. How much, how much, how much more me and you are supposed to understand how we're supposed to declare the glory of God? Look at creation and you will know there's an awesome, awesome God that has an awesome plan with us. And that we cannot understand how he can be so excited about us and in his love forgive us for everything and say, let's go for destiny together. That's your God. Are you with me? Hello? Are you? Darkness was over the surface. And I say, in that darkness, in that place of you don't know what's happening, there's one word for you, expectation. Expectation. There's dark places. And there's a dark place in your life where you don't know what's happening. And that place is where you must have an expectation because God is in that place and the Holy Spirit is so ready for the word of God to be spoken so that immediately things can change. But for that, you need to see what he sees before you see the backdrop of heaven and earth. God will help you. God will help me. Amen. And God said, and God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, you know, I actually wanted to start with two, 1 Corinthians 2 and then go here and by wisdom, I didn't do it this morning because then the sermon went in any case too long um, but um, so let's just carry on here but in that context there's a scripture that says you know all know it no eye has seen no ear has heard no heart has perceived what God has prepared for those who love him for those who are passionate in a in a comrades comrades uh, in a companionship with God for those who are in a companionship with God, for those who are linked with God, for those who are knitted together, your heart and God's heart, for them, oh, you cannot imagine, you cannot imagine what he has prepared for you. But you will hear, you will speak, and you will say, and you will understand. Hello, are you with me? If you come from this place of companionship, from this place of being united. When you are united with bitterness or with slavery or with rubbish, you will be able to see what's coming. You are united with bitterness, you will say and you will see what's going to happen. You are united with depression and negativity. You see what's going to happen in the context of negativity. You speak it. And you said, and you will see. Now here, God sees a world. And he loves this world. He loves this world. And he loves it so much that he will give Jesus. But there's a world that God said we need to hate. Hate the world. Turn your back on the world. The world is dead to you. You are dead to that world. That's the world where we created one hell of a mess but there's still a dream world what God saw and we're talking about seeing in the spirit what God saw before Genesis 1 verse 1 
in the beginning he didn't create in the beginning john 1 in the beginning before he created he was in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was with god amen so you start with a word if you want to know who you are you start with a word and then you see what god creates so tomorrow if you don't understand what he's creating because you can only see the backdrop and further it's just darkness and emptiness and this and that now the spirit of god is there have an expectation god's word can be spoken into that may you have the grace and the awesomeness of your understanding that you have the privilege of speaking that word this word into that darkness with the holy spirit and as the holy spirit is hovering over your life because god will never leave you never forsake you according to his promises but he's waiting for you and your life can end genesis 1 verse 1 and at the end of your life what happens no form emptiness darkness you're going to heaven because the darkness wasn't from hell the formless wasn't from hell but god was so ready for a process for an awesome process to work a lot of things in your life but you never understood that in that place of that darkness and formless you're supposed to have an expectation and the holy spirit is ready for you to utter the word where the holy spirit is not reacting on your word he's only reacting on the word of god because he's faithful in the trinity holy spirit will react on the words of jesus and open it up amen so you speak the word of christ the word that is from god holy spirit will take it everything was that nothing happened further and god said but he said because first of all he saw but now follow me he saw and based on that he said and then he saw that it was good what is his standard for good how can he say it's good it could be bad it could be good it was good according to what he decided before the time what he saw how it must be according to his dream world according to his desire how light must be how things must be how you must be according to that standard in his heart in what he saw he said it came into being and then he saw it was good according to his standard talking about seeing in the spirit what are you supposed to see in the spirit that god will open it up for you to see in the spirit to see in the spirit amen but then come to know this pattern this principle of god saw then he said and he saw it was good God saw, he dreamt here, there's a world that he so loved, and he saw, and we messed up, and we messed up, and God sent his son to restore, so that what the father saw in the beginning, that the father's dream will be fulfilled, and Jesus gave himself for the sake of the father's dream, so that at the end, the father could say to Jesus, it's good and he's very good hello are you with me and god said let there be light and there was light god saw that the light was good and he separated the light from darkness god called the light day and he called the darkness night oh remember he said there's a darkness that's from god and there's a darkness that's from hell there's a darkness filled with the devil and all his strategies perfect excellent strategies to destroy you excellent he's not stupid he's smart he has a very lot of excellent smart strategies to destroy your life all those in a certain darkness but there's a darkness that is called night where in that darkness you are refreshed you are at peace you are having rest he got called the darkness night now let's take night, and if night in the darkness is not serving you accurately, what's going to happen in the day? You're going to be fraught, man. You're going to be, go, only for three or four nights. Only three of your hundreds, I don't know, yeah, yeah, thousands of nights that you will be on earth. 
And only three of those thousands of nights don't sleep. Don't surrender to the pattern of the darkness. And the pattern of the darkness is for you to sleep. Once again, I see some faces. Darkness is called night. God called the darkness night. Night is there to serve you as the crown of creation. For you to be refreshed, to rest in his presence. Where God will impart in, in, in the night. In the night, my Afrikaans, my nire verman, my English, my kidneys. Do they say that? I don't know. Your inmost being um, is like a conscience. But God give it to his beloved in his sleep. Some lazy guys that didn't want to study, they gave me that scripture. Pastor, the Bible says, the Lord will give it to me in the night when I'm sleeping. I said, no, you will study. Can you believe it? And, uh, but what am I saying? Darkness that will work for you. Darkness that when you are finished with the darkness, you are refreshed. You're coming out of the night and you are refreshed. That darkness God calls night. He's going to create. He's working even when you are sleeping. That's what the word says. There's no time. It's a whole hour teaching about that. But how God is working while you are at peace in his rest. Oh, in the night, but also working and walking in his rest in the day. Oh, I can blame the circumstances and I can have all the nice issues. And the, the enemy is so excited that you can blame all that. Instead of taking the first pattern that God has set as a foundation for you. On the basis of this backdrop of heaven and earth that I created. The first thing that I want to create is I want you to understand how you will be refreshed by darkness. And how you will be excited in the light in what, I'm gonna, I'm, what I've done and what I'm going to do in the light. Amen. Let it be so. God said, let there be a fault. That's not a mistake. Um, between the waters, to separate waters from water. So God made, God made it and separated the water under the, under the, give me another word for fault. V-A-U-L-T. What is your translation? What is it saying? The eight sponsor. Okay. Eight sponsor. From the water above it. And it was so. God called the, that sky and he called the rest the water Woo! on the earth let's just go there what am i saying separate water from water what are we talking about my brother there is a fountain of living water in you but you need to understand the flow of the spirit for this reason the flow of the spirit for that purpose in your life so there's a flow of the spirit but for certain purpose if you say the water of the sea there's a certain purpose. It's not for drinking. But you can, if you don't understand the flow of the Spirit. Now you, you are drinking this water, but you're going to die. For the flow of water. Because that salt water, you cannot live. The salt for water is for a certain purpose. For certain fish and certain things that God wants to create. In that water. And with that water. Hello? And there's fresh water. Oh, that is for drinking. Are you with me? So may God help you to understand the flow of his spirit. And from that place, purpose is going to be created. There's a time frame that God, God created time. God created what, he, what he's going to do for your benefit with darkness and with light. And then there's a flow of his spirit that for certain different purposes. And you need to come into that place so that you can see in the spirit. So that you can see what he is saying. So that you can see the purposes of how the Spirit is moving in you. Amen. Are you still here? And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place. And let the dry ground appear. Call the dry ground land. And gather the waters sea. Oh, you can be in that place. And you can throw, not a tantrum. And say, God is just dry. What is the purpose of this earth? Nothing. This is just land. Think about land without any, any plants. And not just like desert. But it's just nothing. Nothing forever. Nothing. Wherever you can look. So see. And so in some areas of your life. My brother, my sister. You can see there's sea. There's no fresh water. 
And you can see there's land, but there's nothing, nothing, nothing growing, nothing living, nothing, nothing. Have faith. Have faith. Because God sees something what's going to happen on that earth. God sees something that's going to happen in that sea. God sees something that's going to happen in the sky. The birds of the air. Hello. God sees some things that's going to happen. You don't see it. And purposefully he will make sure that you don't see it. He will use his darkness so that sometimes you cannot see it. We say, oh, it was night the whole day. Okay, right here. But you walk by faith, not by sight. And God is pleased if you walk by faith. And he sometimes will make sure that you don't see because he's pleased. Because he, has, he can have a certain relationship with you here that God cannot have in heaven. Because in heaven you will see everything. But here on earth he can have and you can give him and you can honor him. And you can love him with a unique relationship that you will not have for eternity with him. Just now, for this very, very, very short time. And that is where you must walk by faith. Where you don't see and where he will not show you because he has the faith that you will respond to him. To say, God, even though I don't see, I don't feel, I don't understand, still I will love you, still I will faith, be faithfully following you, still I will, still I will, still I will. Never be able to say that in heaven. But he has a desire that you will give him that relationship here on earth. Give him that relationship that you cannot give him in heaven. That you will walk by faith. That in that place of darkness, the darkness that he created, you will honor him. Because there's no darkness in heaven. But in this place of darkness, it's a place of expectation. What God is going to do. What God is going to create. And the only thing that is why it's not happening is because the opportunity is waiting for the word from the mouth of the Father through your life. Through your life. But as the Holy Spirit leads. Amen. Are you still here? And then, interesting, what, what happened then? Then God said, let the land produce vegetation. And let from the sea, let there be fish. Now, I'm running a little bit ahead with that. But, you know, from the land came forth the plants. Without the land, the plant cannot survive. The plant can survive because it came from the land. The sea fish can survive as long as it is not in the fresh water. Now you get fish for both, but those in the salt water, they, it can survive and it comes from that place and it can survive in that place. And in that place, the sea in the fish and the fish in the sea, that's how it must be. Other, oh, that rhyme. Okay. So, so that, so that that's the place where it can fulfill his destiny. That's where he can live. That's where you can have the fullness. But you know, running ahead to there, the same with you. You in Christ, Christ in you, and then you can live your purpose. Put that fish on dry ground, the fish that's supposed to be in the sea. That fish going to die. You see the man without God. Maybe here on earth he can still, like the fish there on the dry ground. And... But somewhere eternal death is waiting for him. Somewhere death is waiting for that fish. You can put him in the fresh water, he's going to die. Throw him there in the land, on the land. So there's a lot of people dying out there. A lot of nations dying. May God have mercy on the church not to be selfish, but to understand how to reach the nations. Amen. But my brother, my sister, if you can be... In the place where you're supposed to be. And that place could be in you. I need to be in Christ. Christ needs to be in me. And that's where I will find life. That's where I will find my destiny. Tell your neighbor, don't be a stupid fish. <laughs> Are you with me? Ah, please, men. 
Please, man. So, from, from the ground, the plants, from the sea, the fish, and you, from God. Plants from the ground, fish from the sea, and you, from God. You cannot live without Him. Are you with me? Verse 14, let there be lights. Okay, the stars, the moon, the sun. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause that one. Are you okay with that? But for every season, there's something that you must understand. How he wants to put the, his light on your situation like the sun. How he wants to put his light on the situation like the moon. And sometimes he wants to put no light on the situation. If you like it or not, and there's no light, not full moon. Okay, and he wants you to see nothing. But he's working. He's not doing nothing then. He's working. God is working. He's at work. He's not sleeping at night and working in the day. With all respect. Are you with me? Ah, hello. Okay. Verse 24. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind. According to their kind. And they were created. And every time, every time God created... And he looked and he said, it was good. He said and he saw. Let's say he said and he saw. No eye, no eye, no eye has seen, no eye has heard, no eye could hear. But God did it. So what he saw, he said, and then he saw it was good. Each one to his kind. Now we are all from a different kind. So from the ground came the plants. From the water came the fish. You find the birds, you find the animals. But nothing came from the heart of God where he got personally involved. Because he spoke his word, it was there. He spoke his word. He looked into the darkness and he said, let there be light. He looked into the light and he said, separate the water. He looked and he said, separate the water and the, and, the, and the ground. He looked at the ground and he said, plants. He looked at the sea, looked at the sky, birds, looked there. And the create, cre creatures were created. And then he looked at himself. And he said, let us, let us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us make man in our likeness and our image. And you know then, God got personally involved. He didn't just say. He came up close and personal with you and me. And he came and he took and he formed you. And then he breathed from himself, his spirit in you. The breath of life. And he put it in you, so that deep will call unto deep, so that you will worship him in spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, and in truth. After his kind, after his image, his likeness, the rest, after their kind, the man. So there's one thing hell must understand for the kids, for the next generation. You come from baboon. You come from baboon. But with baboon, God said, with human being, God really got involved. Are you with me? God didn't just say, Psh, and there you were. You originated not from the baboon, but from the heart of God. Where he put himself in you. And as long as Satan and hell can push that agenda, the man must not understand he came from God. He must not understand that he needs God to really live. He must not understand that his origin is God. So that it's God in him, him in God. Like the fish, I need the sea in him to have the oxygen, to have, hello? He's not, are you with me? Like that, he needs it in him and he needs it around him. You need Christ in you and you in Christ. If you want to live. If you don't want to have a hell of a crisis every day and you just have crisis upon crisis upon crisis and you don't know what's happening. It's the enemy. Many times not the enemy, many times it's just stupidity. 
And then God, and we must yield to him so that his wisdom, not your wisdom, that is foolishness in front of God, but his wisdom will protect you, will guide you so that you will live. Not try to solve the problem of life, but to see life as a gift and enjoy that life. I need to get there. I hope you guys also. Let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Are you still here? Let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness. And then he created him in his image and his likeness. He created a male and female. And then what did God do? Say, okay, great, there they are. No. He blessed them so that they will be blessed. He blessed them and said, I have a Canaan for you, a lot of goodies, enjoy your life. No. He blessed them to do. Everybody say, blessed to do. You have a job to do. If you're lazy in your work, you're not fulfilling God's dream for you. You don't understand God's blessing and you will not experience the blessing that is from God. Circumstances can fall on, fall on you and by luck, in a certain sense, what be the world will call luck. Okay. Yeah, look at what that guy has. But he's not walking with the blessing of God. The blessing of God is where God's hand is on that man. He said, I'm, bless, I'm blessing you. My hand is upon you. And you must do the following. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Reign over it. Primary purpose for your life. You need to stand before God and you will stand before God for that primary purpose for why you were created. Because that day you can say, ah, I thought I was a baboon. No, you cannot say that. Hello? But as a human, as a man or a woman in this place, created by his, in his image, God worked. And God said, you're going to be like me. What does that mean? You're going to work. God is not lazy, so you're not going to be lazy. Why? Otherwise you're in trouble. No, but because you're going to be like him. You work because you are like him. The enemy will try to get you in slavery where you work as a slave. So that you try to become something through your work. I am a success because what I did with my work, I became successful. That's why I'm a success. I'm a failure because I failed in my work. That's rubbish. You're a success because God didn't fail in his work when he created you. Amen. They say, I'm a success because God was successful when he created me. Live as a testimony of his success. And that is with a certain attitude, certain perspective about life. Amen. And from that place of being who you're supposed to be and who you are, as a success you walk into life and success walk into circumstances success walk into challenges success walk into that place who's the success you in christ and christ in you you are more than a conqueror because the conqueror is living in you amen are you still here now i'm gonna go quickly um uh, with this five points we did a series about this Please get it. It's on the, our Father's Home channel on YouTube, somewhere there, where we did five Sundays about these five points and one Sunday in a summary. So six Sundays we're going to do in 10 minutes. Sorry, five, 15 minutes. By faith. Okay, let's try. Hallelujah. So these five. You know, that's what we were supposed to do as crown of creation. And at the end of the five, it's, it's about fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue, rain, 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 as crown of creation, rain. But then, Adam and Eve, and we and Adam, in Adam and Eve, we submitted, we submitted to the words that came from the mouth of the snake, words that came from the mouth of the enemy. We submitted to those words. You're still here? Okay. And submitting to that, who became the final authority? Who can reign over the earth? The God of this world is the devil himself. I know. Remember, there's a world that God created. This dream world. And God so loved this world. God has such a passion for this world. He gave his son. And there's a world that we must hate. And in this world, this mess up, Satan is the God of this world. 
And in this place you can be destroyed for eternal damnation. Or you can turn your back on this world and you cannot bring a destruction in me. That world where Satan is God. You draw the world in you. And the God of that world will not leave you. Because you're creating a platform. I'm the God of that world, Satan says. You draw that world into you. You create a platform for me, Satan, to come into your life and to do whatever I want. You draw the bitterness and you speak the bitterness. What will enemy, that demon of bitterness, say, hey, that guy is talking my talk. You, you've heard that before. You know, somebody that you like what he says and you can identify with what he says and you put your, you open your life for that what that man and what he says because you feel you are he found anklang with him oh you you can relate to him hello in what he says so this demon look hey man i can relate with that guy because that guy hey he's speaking the compromise he's speaking my language me demon of bitterness my demon this demon of lust this demon of compromise this demon of unforgiveness this demon of racism this demon of selfishness and you start with what you start with the word holy spirit waited and when you, when you started to when he started to hear the word he responded and there was light when it was set you start to say and you speak the bitterness you point the finger and that spirit that is ready, that demon that is ready to destroy you, he will come, he will come. It will not take a while when you lit the fire, psh, it's there. Your tongue can be lit up from hell, a fire from hell. But your tongue could have the fire of the Holy Spirit on their tongues. Fire from the Holy Spirit. And when you open your mouth, you will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from his mouth that you utter through your mouth. Your mouth. This is what he uttered from his mouth. Hello? Ah, oh, you're still here. Hey. Death. Life and death in the power of the tongue. In the power of the tongue. May God help you. Okay, so... He blessed them and said, remember Ephesians 2.10. I will not derail. We are his creation. God created you. Hey? You are his workmanship. Say as yeah, yeah, say Marksel. You are his workmanship. You are you are the product of his work. Created to do. Created to work. Created to do the works that he has prepared for you, good works that he has prepared for you in advance. You are created to do because you are created in his image and God is a God that does, that is doing, that is working. Okay, are we with one another? Okay, he blessed them and said, be fruitful. Now we messed up everything, but then we see the patterns of all five being restored on earth three examples the first one we find in chapter 3 we're not going to every reference but it's all there get the teaching we find a man is it Enoch or he or how do you say that in English Enoch Enoch nearly like the thing that you eat Enoch okay but and he walked with God now Fruitfulness, my brother, is not how many kids are you going to get. The more kids you have, the more faithful you are. When he said, be blessed and multiply. No. Being blessed be f and by the first thing, you need to be fruitful. How am I fruitful? Now I must be fruitful. It has to do, it comes from a place of intimacy. It's about your intimacy with heaven, where heaven and earth meets. Hello in you what are you praying when you pray when your prayer is positioned and the, what you pray is on earth as it is in heaven let be a there be a, this place of companionship of intimacy between me and heaven not me and hell with my tongue that can be lit up from hell i can have a place of intimacy with hell and speak for the death and curses like satanists and a lot of guys can do and it works because it's real devil is real hell is real but so 
million times more heaven is real. So in this place, be fruitful means being intimately connected with your God and with heaven. That you are the connection point between heaven and earth. The connection point between heaven and earth. On earth as it is in heaven, through your prayer, through your words. Let it be so, God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God give you this major honor that says, I trust you with my word. I trust you that you will pray this. I trust you that you will be the angel. I trust you that we will build the church together. That you will be co-worker. You will be ambassador. You will be the light. You will be the salt. You will be a letter of, letter of Christ, trophy of his victory. You will be because I believe in you. Amen. Be fruitful. And the key word, the key word, the key word is walk with God. Adam and Eve, the first thing God wanted from him is, Adam, where are you? Because God was walking in the garden. And he was longing for his son. Longing, longing for Adam and Eve to come and walk with him. So the first, what he expected, the first call that he uttered was, Come and walk with me. Where are you, Adam? And what do we see with this man, Enoch? He walked with God. And then he said, the word says, he walked with God and there's just, one day he wasn't there anymore. He was gone. He didn't die. It wasn't through death that he went to heaven. But heaven and earth, was so, he was so connected, heaven and earth, that he just disappeared. You know, there was another guy, also Eli. Elijah, sorry, Elijah, inside that walked with God in such a way. It was just, there he goes with the fire, fire horses. Are you with me? That is fruitfulness. Be fruitful. Be in an intimate, passionate relationship with God, where you have a connection point between heaven and earth. And the connection point for South Africa, the connection point for Bluefontein is the church. The connection point at the work between heaven and earth at your business is you. The connection point at the university, at the school, is you. Not because you are better than this, but because God in His grace called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, out of the wrong darkness. Amen. You are still here. That's fruitfulness. You, you, there's, there's an hour that we can go on with this. A bit fruitful. But this man, the word says, he walked with God. And then, second point, what was that? Multiply. So they multiplied. So they multiplied on the earth. But the more they multiplied, the further they got away from God, from this intimate connection with God. And it was one hell of a mess up. And God says, he was sorry, he said, uh-uh, I shouldn't have created mankind. But then, there was a man. And the word of God says, Noah walked with God. And God took the man that walked with him, with his wife and his kids. And he asked them to build something that's ridiculous, where they will be mocked by the people around them. Will this man be obedient? Will he walk with me in such a way that he will do by faith whatever I ask of him? Will he be faithful and obedient to me? And then he will have the breakthrough. And in the ark of his obedience, in the ark of his faithfulness, in the ark, hello, of his faith, in the ark of standing in spite of the mocking and the whatever, in the ark in spite of not seeing what the heck am I building this ark for. There is not a dam close by or a this or a that. How is the water going to fill the earth? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. It's like a darkness, but a darkness with the expectation. Are you with me? But this man walked with God by faith. The righteous will walk by faith. He walked by faith. Walk with God. Walk with God. And so God destroyed this multiplication where the man created a lot of rubbish, created a lot of this. And it was everything that is not from God will be forsaken, will, will drown will drown around you and you will walk through. You will have your breakthrough. You will have your breakthrough. You will not lose your breath in being suffocated, in drowning in your situation, 
You walk faithfully with God. You build what God has for your life. You go with God. You go with the vision. You go with the patterns, patterns, patterns of, for the ark in this world. You go with the patterns. And you will go through as a testimony into a new dispensation. That was be fruitful, multiply. Then fill the earth. Fill the earth. God wants to show a pattern. And he finds a man with the name Abram. And he says, fill the earth. He will fill, you will fill this piece of ground as a pattern. It's called Canaan. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to have this covenant with you. And I will take you to a land. That's late in all the generations. They said, according to the promise, according to the promise of the covenant, um, we, we trust you for Canaan, Lord, because this is what you promised. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in that pattern, their heart must be with him. Their heart must be with him. So God says to Abram, have faith in me. No, Abram had faith in God. But he says, walk before me, then you will be blameless. Genesis 17 verse 1. Walk before me and you will be blameless. Adam, where are you to walk with God? Enoch, walk with God into heaven psh, with no death in between. Now I walked with God. There he goes, lifted up above all the rest, and they are all forsaking. They are all drowning into a new dispensation. Abram, walk before me, and you will be blameless. And God set forth a pattern for us to learn from in the Old Testament of the third, third facet. But you know, Abram, as he walked with God, he could see. He could see what was in the heart of God before God said, I'm giving you Canaan. So in out of that, he was, had an expectation of what, when will God say, it is good. Or it is very good. And you know, because Abram walked with God. He could see far beyond Canaan, beyond the prophets, beyond the coming of Christ, beyond the church of Christ, beyond revelation. And he, the word says in Hebrews 11 about faith, Abram walked with God, but he walked as a foreigner, as a stranger on earth. Why? Because he expected a city whose architect and builder is the Lord. He expected the new Jerusalem. He didn't expect the Canaan of circumstances changed into a blessing around him. He walked. But because he could see what God is seeing. We're talking about seeing in the Spirit. Because he could see through the Holy Spirit what is the heart of God. The heart of God at the end of everything is the new Jerusalem. He was looking for a city, the word says, whose architect and builder is the Lord. A, a city built through the church of Christ with his son. Where this city, the new Jerusalem, will be given by the son to the father. Father, this is your eternal home. The nations as your home. And where the father will tell the son, this church is your bride. Given as the bride. Given as the home of the father. Oh man. May we see in the spirit beyond the situation, beyond the physical Canaan. But we see in the, for the purposes of God, the desires of God. What is he dreaming about? What is your father dreaming about for your life? Walk before him, walk before him, walk before him, and you'll be blameless. That means what? Be blameless. You don't know how to do that. How do you do that? Walk before God, and your heart will be his heart. His heart will be yours heart, your heart. There will be this connection, and you'll know how to be blameless. Oh, Amen. The third one was, that was the third one. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and then subdue it. No man would be able to do that. Subdue it. Subdue it. Subdue it. Sub let all the rubbish that mankind created, and how man gave Satan and hell the authority, to mess up the nations. Subdue that. And he had, for that he had to send his son. He had to send his son. Because the son could see what the father sees. Part of the trinity. And he sent the son. 
And then Jesus came and he said, what did he say? I only see what the Father sees. I only say what the Father says. And what I see he's doing, that's what I'm doing. And that is his life. Oh man, that's how we're supposed to live. That we can say what the Father says. Start just by faith, by saying this, because you are accurate by saying what the Word says. Are you with me? Start to speak the Word, only because you want to say what He says. Not because this is a trick, to change your circumstances. Yes, circumstances will submit to the Word, yes. But not because you have a motive of that, but because you want to say what he's saying. I want to speak like my dad. You know the, the guy, the little kitty with his hero? Oh man, he has the words of the hero. He says it with a certain attitude. He says it with an intonation. He says it with, with an accent of that hero. You know? The little kid. Hey, are you dead? Are you still here? You're still here. He's saying it in a way. I want you to speak like your hero is speaking. Who the... Free cat to say that to the child. Nobody. But when you, he's your hero. You speak the word because you want to speak like he's speaking. Because you're in love with him. Because you worship him. Because he's your hero. You are consumed with him. Like the little boy with his hero. Because you are consumed with him. You want to speak like he speaks. So you speak the word not for, as a trick to change your circumstances. You speak the word because you're in love with him and he's your hero. And knowing him, that's life. That's eternal life. Amen. We are still here. We are still here. Please, take these principles. Go and write it down. Go and get it next Sunday when we put it up on the channel. And work through these things. Please work through these things. God worked with all of this. He really worked. Let's do the work. Amen. Are you still here? So he sent his son. So that at the end of the day, everything... Everything in heaven and on earth will submit to him. Will submit to him. Because he laid down his life. He gave up everything from the throne. And like he could speak from the throne. When he spoke and said, let there be light. Let there be this. When he got off his throne. To come and create you. And get personally involved with you. So the second time he got off his throne. And left everything behind to clean up your mess. And my mess. Oh man, that's a God of love and grace. That's an awesome God. And he came to clean up the mess that we created. But even to be in that place, to subdue it, he must, to subdue, he must submit to the Father. Let's say to subdue, I must submit. You submit to that demon of lust. You submit to that fear. Hello? That fear will determine what will happen. You submit to God. And he will fight the battle for you. Are you here? Are you here? So even in Gethsemane, when Jesus said, Lord, if it's your will, remove this cup from me. Never... The less, not my will, but your will be done. There, he took the victory. The rest is history. But there, he took the victory. In that prayer, he said, I submit, so that the Father said, you can subdue. And as he submitted to the Father, the Father said, your name will be the name above all other names. And all other names will submit to your name. Are you with me? He came as the line of Judah. He showed the power of God, the miracles, the this, the that, the storm to calm, the water in wine, wine, everything. But then from Gethsemane was the lion, but he was the lamb. Lamb led to the slaughter. And even if they mocked him and said, where's his power? Where's his authority now? Look there. How pathetically he's just there. He keeps silent. He says nothing. They beat him. He do nothing. He says nothing. For the flesh looks pathetic. We can call it beautiful now. But how did it look then? To all these guys also that went with him. Everything is gone. Peter, let's go fish. What's there to do now anymore? And you can be in a situation. You could feel, but what's happening? You know, 
are there certain things that I saw the power of God and I saw something break loose and suddenly, ish, it's tough to be a Christian. Some, it's tough to walk now. So well, where, what's happening now? But there's something not just for the healing of these guys and for the healing of those guys and for the demons to, yeah, guy to be set free from the demons, for the storm to be still. But there's something to be birthed for the nations for eternity. Before that, he became the lamb. He became the lamb. He was still here. So that on the, on the cross, the temptation was not just the enemy want to kill him, kill him, kill him. The Pharisees want to kill him in the flesh. They just saw they need to kill him, they kill him. But hell, hell must make sure that he does not die as the perfect lamb. So mock him to get off. Ah, if you're the son of God, prove yourself, you know. But he can say one word, and the legions of angels will be there. But the victory, the place to have victory is now. He, what he had learned, what he suffered to be obedient even unto death. The biggest victory was on the cross, not to get off the cross. But just to say, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. To stay on the cross and die the perfect lamb. Because Satan knew. You know, in the past, thousands, millions of animals. When the animal, every priest had to check. The animal is perfect. The animal is good. There's no, nothing wrong with the animal. When it is offered up, God did something. Heaven connects with earth. When there's a perfect offering, heaven connects with earth. Jesus cannot be a perfect offering. Hell says. But in the end, it is finished. He died as the perfect, perfect, perfect offering. He died victorious. He's into death. That was the finishing line of the victorious Lamb of God. That was his victory. Resurrection was the promise of the Father. Resurrection wasn't the victory of Jesus. Dying as a perfect Lamb was the victory of Jesus. And because he was faithful till death, Holy Spirit, on the command of the Father, raised him from the dead. Awesome, awesome. And so, through humility you subdue. Through humility, obedience in humility you subdue. Crucified with Christ. Crucified with Christ. That's your challenge through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. To be crucified with Christ. The death of your flesh. Life is Christ, die is gain. Die, first of all, tomorrow the death of your flesh. My flesh tomorrow must die. My fears must die. My anxiety must die. My anxiousness must die. My self-control must die. My performance must die because it's profit. Life is Christ, die is gain, gain, gain. So that there's more of Christ, more of excellent life that I can have tomorrow. Are you still here? Are you still here? Give yourself, give yourself into that. Give yourself, make sure that you are crucified with Christ so that you understand how to die with Christ. You don't have to, God will do that. And you, to be buried with Christ, to be raised with Christ so that when you are raised with Christ, you know the next point. As we said, after you've been raised with Christ, then you are. Must I take the other 30 sermons all over again? then you must reign with Christ in heavenly places. Crucified with Christ, die with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ, and seated with Christ in heavenly places. Number five, reign. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. Subdue and reign. Reign, reign with Christ. Revelation says we will rule and reign with Christ forever, 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 forever as kings and priests. As kings and priests. Kings in the name of Jesus, priests for Jesus' name's sake. Are you still here? We are at the last point. Are you still alive? Smack your neighbor, give him a holy smack and say, are you alive? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't do it. You are afraid of him, eh? Okay. So... Bottom line, to reign with him, 
So what, what, what is in you? The victory from heaven is in you. The impact of God's victory is in me. Let's say the impact of the victory of Christ is in me. That's why you are more than a conqueror. That's why you have overcome. For greater is he that's in you than he who is in the world. Only because of the state of God being in you makes you already an overcomer. Now, because you have overcome in here, victory is in here, therefore, understand, you can, where you walk, victory, the victory of Christ walks. The victory of Christ walks, but why don't you see the victory? Because you don't submit and surrender and humiliate, humiliate, humble yourself to the victory of Christ. That's why the victory isn't shown. So may God give us the grace the mercy to understand, amen, that you run into the word, man. If you like it or not, if you only see darkness, if you only see the darkness, run into the word. And if not the first time, but the second, but the hundred, but the, by the 974th time that you speak for the word, then just certain breakthroughs come. Because the problem is not, I speak the word, but like in Genesis 1, he said, let it be light, and he was like, that's not the problem. The problem is you must get beyond your flesh and all the other voices that's been spoken in your flesh, in your fear, in your anxiety, in your whatever we went through, because we're not perfect. But to get the word beyond the other words, to push those words aside. And when the word is aside and the, the word of God is on top, psh, let there be light. And there was light. So push through your flesh. Push through the challenges. Amen? With the word of God. And you will have your breakthrough. You will have your breakthrough. The word of God that was sent forth, Isaiah 55. I've sent forth my word. And it will accomplish what I sent it for. It will not return to me void. It will not return to me unsuccessful. My word will be successful. You get his word into your life. Success is in your life. And the success will be fulfilled. God, come and help us. We trust you for that. We honor you for that. For your awesome mercy. God, forgive us any form of frustration, even discouragement. When we look into certain areas and when we are looking in certain areas of our lives where there's darkness, help us to understand what darkness is filled with the devil that we must turn our back on? And what darkness is filled with expectation? Where we don't understand, but we trust. We don't understand, but we trust. And we speak forth your word into that darkness that is called night. And that we will find, I pray for every man, woman, to find rest in the night. Darkness that is called rest. To be refreshed by the darkness that are called night so that in the day in the light we can have awesome fulfilled fulfilled lives lives that has eternal value we trust you for that god that it will be so for our lives help us help us to go through the processes but god help us to see to see what you see. We want to see in the Spirit, Lord, have mercy on us. Through the blood of Christ, we can come with boldness before your throne so that we can live in your presence, God, so that we can walk with you like, like you desired that from, from Adam. But then Enoch and Noah and Abram and Jesus, they walked, they walked with you. And we, as the church that will rise up to become sons of God, that we will learn how to walk with you, how to walk with you, how to walk in the light, how to walk away from the flesh, how to walk away from darkness, as you've called us out of that darkness into your marvelous light. But thank you, Father, that we will walk by faith as we yield to your word, and from your word, that we will eat your word, meditate your word, live your word, speak your word. From that word, we will find the faith to Walk by faith as the righteous in Christ. I bless every man, every woman in this place to have such a quality life, a life of substance, a life of eternal value, Lord. Let it be so. Help us to see what we've built inaccurate. God, that we will, we will shake that 
out, out, out of our lives. Shake that what we built wrong, Lord. Have mercy on us so that tomorrow we can build accurate with your word through your spirit. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. As all say, Amen, Amen. Let it be so.